very nice to the kids. So all I got to say is props to Trey Shack. Hashtag Trey. Everybody kiss Trey's butt. Hey, this is for whoa, you, Trey. Whoa, okay. Wow. Die fan Steve. Thanks for the call, buddy. Have a good one. All right, pal. Wow. And without further ado, live from the Sticky's Rock and Roll Chicken Shack Hotline, it's Jim Harris. Big Jim. That was so sweet <laughs> to listen to, that love affair with Trey Shad. Do you think you have anybody on this planet that would speak like that about you, Jim? Not a one. No, now, maybe I can't my find wife. anybody that loves me that much. And maybe my wife, but I don't know. Not That's it. Depends on what day, right? Right. All right, Jim. Well, let's uh, dive into. Uh, I want to talk a few things: uh, Hogs baseball, basketball, some NFL combine stuff. Uh, let's let's talk. I guess some hog basketball and some of your thoughts over the over the weekend and this new trend we see of winning on the road. What have you seen? Whether it be different in the past few weeks, whether it's different from last year. In past years, what do you see different that this team has been able to go and win some big games on the road? Well, I think experience, Pat. I think that was key. We talked about this last week, how important these two games were going to be, even if Auburn is not uh, playing as consistently as strong as others. But uh, And I'm hearing myself on the other hand. I don't know why. Uh, you sound that great. Game. Okay, well, I'm hearing an echo somewhere. But anyway, uh, <laughs> I uh, I thought that uh, it was going to be the most important week of the regular season. Uh, if Arkansas was to win the two, they'd be set at 20 and 5, and I think they punched their ticket now to the NCAA tournament, no matter what happens in Nashville in the SEC uh, in the SEC tournament. Uh, well, they punched their ticket to the NCAA tournament. Um, it was uh looked like the Ole Miss game was uh was a matter of experience, Pat. I think that uh you know, Kai Madden now has been there, you know, his fourth year and in the past maybe he would have taken that shot inside, maybe he would have hoped to have drawn a foul that probably we know now and the guys know now might not have been called for Arkansas, but you know, Arkansas on the road breathes on a guy, and it's called a foul. That's just how it is. You uh, you did it uh, for four years. You know what happens. Um, love what the backup guards are. I guess Beard's not a backup anymore, but love that two guys who probably weren't counted on for a lot of scoring have come through in games like they did at Ole Miss where you got uh, Manny Watkins, 4-4, four, four, Beard, Four four from the three point line and five of five overall, and you can get nine of nine shooting from those guys. You, you got to feel good pretty much about any night you're on the road, and it opens it up a little bit for Portis, Harris, Michael Qualls, I'm adding addition out assists like on a record pace now. I noticed uh, it was mentioned today on Twitter by a national guy that. A key to Arkansas success is that Kai Madden is averaging a uh, career high assist per game, well over four, and uh, he's also averaging nearly four rebounds a game, which is a career high. So, I mean, all these things are blending together, and the emphasis on defense that came about after Ole Miss stormed up there and won by fourteen, and kind of, kind of jolted Mike, if nothing else. I'd forgotten Pat that. After that game was over, he was so shell shocked he barely even shook hands with uh, Andy oh, Kennedy, Kennedy yeah. at the game. It wasn't. I mean, you know how he is. I mean, he's going to shake hands, but he had that look of my goodness, what did I just say? <laughs> yeah, and, uh, I think everybody was a little in shock, well, I right? I mean, it, it was. I, yeah, I think to that point, Arkansas had gotten by with outscoring people, and I thought they kind of fell into that trap of feeling that was good enough almost, that their defense was okay. But, you know, credit two games. Ole Miss coming into Fayetteville to show it. And then credit that uh, obvious kind of hosing I think they got at Florida for really getting mm-hmm. this team in a in a newfound focus where they played 40 minutes at Auburn and played 40 minutes at Oxford on the road. And that's uh, something we haven't seen from 
from this program in a long time, not just with Mike Anderson. I mean, it didn't just start with Mike that Arkansas couldn't win on the road. It it started happening probably Nolan's last year and continued on through Stan Heath and John Pelfrey for the most part. Yeah, I think when you look at what you probably said at the beginning and look at the experience and the talent that they're bringing back, you're going to win a lot of games on the road, and you're going to be in contention for a lot of games. And the worst loss, and help me out here, other than the Iowa State game, which from seemed like from the jump Iowa State was on fire. Other than yeah. that game and the Ole Miss game, can you remember any other game that that there, we weren't in, or the Hogs weren't in at the end? I mean, every game has pretty much no, been I mean, down they, to the last couple of possessions, right? Yeah, they turned a double-digit deficit at Tennessee into what was a chance to tie. I mean, uh, I mean, you look back and, and remember Beard had three free throws, but uh, he had yeah, that's right, that Tennessee game out sure. anyway. Uh, that was another thing, Pat. He hit. Uh, didn't he go four or four on the road the other night? <laughs> you know, I mean, he didn't miss a shot. Five five overall. Yeah, and I mean, yeah, he didn't miss a shot. But he didn't miss a free throw. He's he's. Uh, he works on every part of his game. I, I mean, I, I, I think it would have been uh, somewhat incredible if he had knocked down all three free throws in Tennessee and, and Arkansas pull that game out, but they didn't. But uh, it's, it's not important now. What's important is they have six games left. And I would say, Pat, tomorrow night they should roll. Um, you know, Missouri's without Wes Clark. Um, not to be confused with General Wesley Clark. Uh, they do yeah, get a is... freshman back that's reinstated, but uh, they ought to handle them. I, but I look at these road games. I mean, those are not – road games aren't gimmies. Let's not just think we can go into every place and win, but I feel a lot better about going into Mississippi State, going into South Carolina, um, you know, being able to do – you know, enough to win those games with the same 40-minute focus. And then you got Kentucky, of course, which sure. is a free shot. That's kind of like uh, what a lot of guys like to say, we're, we're playing with house money. You know, you, uh. you take a free shot at them at Lexington, try to win the second time in a row there. I haven't heard one national announcer mention or note, Dark Souls beating Kentucky three times in a row. In a row. Hey, Jim, uh, can you yeah. hang on, and, and we'll come back with sure. you after this yeah, break? Sure, Pat. I'm uh, not here. I yeah, we'll get, talk a little uh, baseball, but I'm, I'm probably not your guy for the pros, but I, will, I can talk about Phylon. But, yeah, yeah, we'll talk. Yeah, well, there NFL right Combine, they actually hit the um, – Friday is when they actually get on the field and they start Great. dialing up some, some numbers for these guys. I also want to ask you about Tiger, Tiger Woods, because I don't think we talk – I think all this okay. stuff with Tiger – Yep. A lot more has come out since the last week. Okay, we got week. a lot to talk about. I'll stay right here. All right, buddy. Appreciate it. Uh, we're going to hit a break here, come back a little more with Jim Harris. Maybe some analytics as well. 501-433-1037. Hit up some live fan feedback. I am live at the draft in Conway. Dave Ward Drive. Come on out and see me. Roads of Claire. Roads of Claire. We'll be back. It's The Zone on the Buzz Radio Network. in your life. Change your life today for the better. Online at newcreationshcg.com. You are back in the zone, live from the Fury Electric Studios on the Buzz Radio Network and online at 1037thebuzz.com. Now, back to Justin Agri and Pat Bradley. I lied and told her I loved her. She did Welcome it back to the zone. Everybody, appreciate you for joining us. And we welcome back Jim Harris, SportingLifeArkansas.com. Jim, how's the uh, website doing, by the way, buddy? Oh, we're just plugging along. Got, got you know, different writers contributing at different times. Uh, we have a new writer that's been uh, contributing some basketball insight, and I've known him since. Uh, uh, early 90s, I think. I 
Kevin McPherson's a freelancer that's helping out a little bit because he just loves the game and likes to contribute some writing to it. And you know, Pat, we're always there for you. You know, we ought to have uh-huh. a little basketball roundtable. We're probably late for that, but uh, we yeah, need we to talk still about do it the leading up to yeah, yeah leading up to the NCAA and, tournament. You and Mister Eddins maybe could sit in on a little roundtable or something. Is the table going to be round? Or you just well, probably that? will be more triangle or, or uh, I don't know, might be oval. Hmm. You know, hey, before we'll we get into a little out for good food too, you know. Oh, now you're talking. I'll be there before okay. we get into a little hog baseball from over the weekend. And I do want to talk about that. Uh, just if you could, just for I don't know, just just curiosity. Where do you see the hogs in terms of when they get into the SEC tournament? Uh, seating and then um, a projection for the NCAA tournament. Right now, if you had to had to guess today, they look like about a five seed, uh, kind of moving on up. If they continue to win or go five and one in these last six games, which is a possibility, and so is uh, so is going two and four if they're not careful too, because I don't think hmm. LSU or Texas A and M are gimmies at home. I think both of those teams are good enough, you know, and bring enough talent to. You know, do some some damage at Fayetteville if they're not careful either. Um, you know, if they could go five and one, they might could uh, and and win a tournament game. You know, you don't want to get beat in the first round if you've gone in that hot. Uh, they could get up to maybe a four seed. They probably need to be ranked around twelve to fourteen, maybe in the AP poll for that to work out for them. But I. I mean, you know, they just keep playing, keep improving, keep winning on the road. It's it's going to look great to the selection committee. It's just a shame, Pat, they didn't get a bid last year. I think they were good enough mm-hmm. to get in the tournament. I think the SEC really suffered uh, a lot of uh, national um, – well, the national people really kind of ripped on the SEC early for some bad non-conference play by a lot of the teams, but it was – a it was a young league that was kind of coming together in conference play in a tough league, and I think Arkansas played well enough as anybody to get an NCAC uh, bid that they didn't get. And so when you talk about the NCAA tournament, Pat, you know you guys as a freshman, y'all were coming uh, coming off. I mean, y'all hadn't been to the tournament before. Darnell Robinson really was the only player in the starting lineup that had. So you, Y'all were kind of probably fighting the jitters, but you were also the uh, the underdog, the 12th seed, taking shots, uh, playing with house money against Penn State and Marquette. I think if the roles are reversed with this group, having not been to a tournament in a long time and being a fifth seed, how many times do we see a fifth seed lose to a 12? Typically, because mm. there's not a lot of difference between them. And uh, the 12th seed, again, is kind of, playing with nothing to lose. So it would be a diff- uh, definitely a, a dangerous spot for anybody, not just Arkansas. Yeah, that's true for sure. Jim Harris joining us. Jim, uh, got a couple minutes till the top of the hour. When's your best guess Tiger Woods comes back and competes in a tournament? Well, uh, I would he's going to be ready to play. I, I, I would think he'd, he'd play in the Masters, but I could also see him see – him, uh, I don't know. I, I could see him almost semi-retiring. I could see him playing in the majors, but I, I think he's, I think he's worn down. I think his body's not, not there. I think he's got chipping yips, uh, putting yips, driver yips. <laughs> Let me tell you. Is, I mean, so, uh, do you think that's really an injury of some sort, or do you think it's really yeah, just it's be- between his ears? His, injury to his mind. Yeah, I think it's an injury to his mind more than anything, but there are some physical things that Hank Haney's pointed out, if you follow Hank Haney on Twitter, that probably affect uh, some of Tiger's chipping and short game that it didn't bother him years ago. I think, God, how many teachers is, well, he's up to four teachers now and probably a bunch of other people in his ears. He just needs to get it all out of him. It, it, what he's missing and what he had up until I guess 2006 was was Earl Woods in his ear. He, he had Daddy to focus and write, and you know he's not had that in some time now. And I, I think he's yeah you know, he's basically 
getting the old paralysis by analysis. Uh, and driver yet sort of sure thing because he's hitting it all over the place. But now with his chipping, you know, there's a reason why Bobby Jones, probably the greatest golfer before Jack Nicholas, retired from competitive golf at age 28. And and a lot of people don't understand this, but he was uh, he was besieged by nerves and uh, mm. a sour stomach before tournaments, and, and and in a way that nobody realizes. He just didn't go out and play golf and win. I mean, he was. I mean, the nerves really began to get to him, and he decided it wasn't worth it anymore. Once he had accomplished the the Grand Slam of that day, and it wasn't even known as the Grand Slam then, of the two amateurs and the two uh, major opens as an amateur, he just decided that was enough of that stress. And I just can't I, see Tiger doing anything else. Being, I know, mean, it's almost see, bizarre I, to see him right. hanging out on a ski slope. Yeah, I know, but I mean, it, it's, it's the stress is really probably over these years has really cracked him a little bit too. Probably more than than the than the knee and the back and all the other injuries he's had. I mean, I think it's. So we can't put Humpty Dumpty back together. Once that crack happened, you know, I think that was probably something that everybody was a little just sketchy Mm -hmm. about or curious. Was he going to be able to put it after that whole thing happened where he ran into the fire hydrant and knocked him over the head with a a golf club? I guess everyone just thought, wow, is this it? Is there going to now? He's not invincible. He wasn't invincible to her and he wasn't invincible to why he gang. Of all people, I mean, you know, when he couldn't stare down Yang and win, everything changed in the majors. So, uh, you know, he's not the guy that steps out there and everybody's kind of shaking and sort of loses the tiger. You know, they're not fearing well, him like, anymore, and he knows that. They're, the, yeah. All of this is entering into it. It's not just one one thing. It's not one thing to put your finger on. I hope he comes back now. It's kind of sad to see it kind of end like this. I know. We all do. Jim, top of the hour. Thank you, buddy. Good spending time with you, and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Okay, Pat. Thank you. See you. Thank you. Hit a break live here at the draft in Conway. Dave Ward Drive coming up next. Talk with Bob Holt, Arkansas Democrat Gazette. This is The Zone.